I think the Apple Translation app is amazing, but the interface doesn't really work for me. So of course, I wrote a few shortcuts to take advantage of the translation tools that the app makes available inside Apple Shortcut. While I was at it, I added the ability to have pre-made phrases and an automatic copy sent to the clipboard for convenience. I also built in the option to either speak or just display the translations. Muchas gracias. I started out by going to Settings, then I found the Translation app, and then I downloaded the English, and in my case, the Spanish language libraries, so that all of this will work offline if necessary. I'm at a bit of a disadvantage, though, because I'm not bilingual. So while I think the Spanish translations are accurate, no sé hablar español. I honestly have no idea that they, in fact, are. I don't know how to speak Spanish. So that's my disclaimer for this project. I did check the Spanish translations by pasting them back into the English translation, but I don't feel that's a valid certification. It does give us at least a general idea that all of this works, though. This tutorial was kind of made more with the intent as an inspiration for you to create your own use cases with the translation tools available in Shortcuts. I should point out that I believe Apple sends translation material to the big giant head in the sky for processing, so you should be aware of that if you have any privacy concerns. If you're new to Apple Shortcuts, please check out this video first to grab an understanding of the basics. There's a link to it in the description below. The first shortcut of this group is an English to Spanish shortcut that has an option to speak the translation and it copies translated text to the clipboard. I made it so that it could also act as a helper shortcut that can run inside a larger one and accept input from the larger shortcut. When I got the English to Spanish shortcut done, I simply duplicated it, then changed the parameters to build a Spanish to English version. Then armed with both of these, I built one called Translation Pal. It provides a way to integrate my two translation shortcuts together and it presents us with a list of phrases that we might commonly use for conversing in Spanish. These, of course, are just examples, and you can have as many or as few phrases as you like. The Translate app offers a whole variety of languages besides Spanish. You can customize it to any of several languages with just a few clicks. So let's build our two translation shortcuts first, and then we'll move on to our translation pal. This mini shortcut, Translate English to Spanish, has an option to speak the translation, and it copies the translation to the clipboard. It can also act as a helper shortcut if it receives input data from another shortcut and it was built with iOS 17.4. And so this line here, it also can act as a helper shortcut. That's what this does, and that's what this little test here, this if statement and the otherwise statement. So starting out with that, if the shortcut input does not have any value, so that would mean that this was running on its own. It would dismiss Siri and continue in case I called it with Siri by saying, hey Siri, English to Spanish, or something like that, then as soon as the shortcut starts to run, Siri goes away automatically. Then we ask for text, and this is the ask for input action right here. I put that in my favorites because I use it all the time. And the little prompt I used was ask for text with English to Spanish. Then our options, I wanted to make sure we allow multiple lines. Then we translate that provided input from English to Spanish. But this could be any of the two languages that the Translate app offers. So if I just clicked on here, there's a whole bunch of different languages. And same here, a whole bunch. So these are just the two that I used for this demo. So if there is no input from above, so if this is running on its own and not inside another shortcut, this is what it's going to do. It asks for the input and then it does the translation. If there is input from above, the otherwise test, then it translates the shortcut input instead of the text provided with this ask for text, okay? Then we end our little test, 
Then we have a menu that says, would you like to speak the if result? So in other words, whichever this produced, whether it came from another shortcut or if it came from our ask for text, would we like to speak whatever that is? And it because this if result is in this prompt, it shows up when we run it. And then of course a yes or a no. If yes, speak the if result. And we'll look at our options here. And this is where we can figure out how fast, how what the pitch is, what the language is, and what the character actor is of the language. There's a whole array of choices. Now I turn the wait until finished off so that it immediately shows this alert, which is just the text of the if result. So that makes it handy, I think. And of course, I turned off the cancel button. Uh, but if you are using this in a conversation with somebody, they could read it on the screen from this alert as well as hear it spoken. Then if I didn't want it spoken, it would just show it on the screen. Okay, then we end our menu, then we copy that if result to the clipboard, then we stop the shortcut. So let's go ahead and run it real quick. Good morning. I hope you're enjoying this short tutorial on how to use Apple Translation with shortcuts. And it asks us if we'd like to speak it. Bueno días. Espero que estés disfrutando de este breve tutorial sobre cómo usar la traducción de Apple con accesos directos. Okay. So now it also copied it to the clipboard. So let's go back here and let's look at our Spanish to English. When I got the English to Spanish shortcut done, I simply duplicated it, then changed the parameters to build a Spanish to English version. So let's go ahead and run it. And we can just go ahead and paste our Spanish translation from before where we like to speak it. Good morning. I hope you are enjoying this short tutorial on how to use Apple translation with shortcuts. Okay. Now, had we decided not to speak it, let's just run that one time. Buenos dias. And we'll say no. And then we just get that text prompt. Here's the completed Spanish to English shortcut. Please grab a still if it will help you follow along. Let's look at our translation pal. This shortcut is a translation tool between Spanish and English. It features a menu of handy phrases. We use two helpers, one for English to Spanish and the other for Spanish to English. The result is pasted to the clipboard and the user may choose to have the shortcut speak the clipboard. Shortcut reopens until dismissed. Now that reopening I do so that in case you want to try and use it in a conversation, you don't have to keep opening it over and over. We always start with dismiss Siri and continue in case we call this from Siri. And I set a media volume to 75% because I have a habit of turning the media volume down on my phone. And this just automatically brings it up if I want to speak. Now, what I could have done is put this in the little helper shortcuts so it only would run when I chose to speak the shortcut, but I didn't do it. I just stuck it in this, this place. So then we have this big giant menu here, which runs English to Spanish or Spanish to English. It opens the Apple Translate app as an option, just in case you wanted to use it. And then here are the phrases that I just built in here. Do you speak English? Thank you very much. I'd like eggs rancheros, please. Ask for coffee, ask for a menu. And then to break it out of its loop, and this is very important if you repeat it, to have a dismiss so that you can actually end the shortcut. So in the first menu option, English to Spanish, we ask for text with English to Spanish as the prompt. Okay. And then we allow multiple lines. Then we run the English to Spanish shortcut. Now, in this case, we want to send that English to Spanish shortcut an input, which is this text we just asked for. So let's go over here and click until we can get this to open. There we go. And the input is the provided input. And that's what this is right here. This is the provided input. 
So what happens here is this input is sent out to the English to Spanish shortcut and it runs it and it translates whatever we put in to this text box. Similarly, for Spanish to English, it does the same thing. Ask for text with Spanish to English and uh, we have multiple lines. Then down here, we run the Spanish to English little helper shortcut with the provided input from this text box. So if you just happen to maybe copy this and pull it down here, make absolutely sure, even if it says provided input, make sure that you click on this and that there's a little line between this one and this one, just like there's a line here between these two. That way you're making sure that you're giving it this input to translate and not that input to translate. Then open Apple Translate is really simple. We open an app, it's translate, then it stops the shortcut because once it opens translate, we don't need this shortcut anymore. So this menu item is our first pre-made phrase, do you speak English? Okay, with text of the same name. Then we run the English to Spanish and then we see our little connector line. So we come down here and we see that the input is this text box, okay? And we wanna make sure those two are connected. So we click on that and then same thing. Thank you very much. Here's the text, thank you very much. And we did the same thing on the input. We wanna make sure there's a little line between those two, all right? And on through our list of phrases. And of course, these phrases have no relevance to anything other than I like coffee with eight creams and no sugar. You can make these anything you want. You can have as many or as few. And you do that just simply up here by adding menu items, like add a new item, or you could take them away or, or change the ones that are here, whatever you want to do, whatever suits what your you know use case is. All right. So we get down here, and after we ask for a menu, we have our dismiss menu item, which just stops the shortcut. Then the menu ends, and it runs this translation pal shortcut again. And there's no input on this one. So if we didn't have this dismiss option, it would just run endlessly, and you'd have to force exit it or something to get out of it, which isn't pretty. So that's what that dismiss is for. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, so we saw the volume control come up here, so it set our volume. Then we want to do English to Spanish. Good morning. I hope you're enjoying this short tutorial on how to use Apple translation with shortcuts. And it asks us if we'd like to speak it. Buenos dias. I made a custom bookmark for this one, and if you'd like to use it, please check the link in the description below on how to download it. It's absolutely free. Muchas gracias. I hope this one helped. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Roses are red, violets are blue. This is a voice test just for you. How do I sound? Is it loud or is it round? This is a test to see what voice to use. The end. Espero que este haya ayudado, gracias por verlo. Nos vemos en el siguiente. Adiós por ahora.